We have really been enjoying the slow winter days around here and we have started so many projects for the inside of our home and I'm going to get to more of that in a minute. But first I want to tell you about what I am doing here in my kitchen in the morning. So we have a pizza oven, an outdoor pizza oven, and we have so much fun with it. And when it's pizza morning, I start the sourdough dough that morning so that I can let it rise throughout the day so that it's ready before pizza night. So the recipe is really simple. I actually follow my sister's recipe from Farmhouse on Boone. It's just flour, salt, olive oil, water, and sourdough starter. And so I just put all of the ingredients in my KitchenAid and let it mix uh, for about 20 minutes until it can pass the window pane test. And then once it is able to pass the window pane test, I just take the bowl off my mixer and cover it in plastic wrap and leave it to rise throughout the rest of the day. Once I get the dough set aside to rise, I start cleaning my kitchen. It's just really important to me to have a clean kitchen before I officially start the day because it just feels like a clean slate and it's just so refreshing. And so that is really important to me. Like I said, we have a lot of projects going on at our house right now. We are in the middle of putting together a sewing room for me. We got rid of the guest bedroom and we are doing a sewing room. More on that, we are doing a laundry room refresh. We never do full renovations, and so most of the time it's just a refresh. We just want to make the laundry room more efficient, and we are also going to be sprucing up some stuff in our bedroom, and so you will be seeing a lot of that to come in this video and in subsequent videos on this channel because it will take a while for us to gather all the pieces and do all the projects that we are wanting to do in our house right now, but that's great because we have all winter to do them. We thrift basically everything for our house, down to the TVs on our wall, we buy stuff secondhand. It's just so much more sustainable and usually more budget friendly and we find pieces that we like more. And so we are huge fans of thrifting. Normally I'm the type of person that just goes to the thrift store once a week and picks up a few things here and there. But this past week I went antiquing with my mom all day on Friday and then antiquing and thrifting with my sister all day on Saturday. So I got quite the haul. So I thought I would show you guys what we got while it's on my counter before I put it away. So I don't even know where to start. First things first, I got this little pink depression glass, I guess like canister, little bowl. I don't exactly know where I'm gonna put it yet, but I know that I liked it and I know it went with our house, so I bought it. I also got another little bin. This is only $2.50 and it just has the prettiest details of flowers and the handles. It's just so cute. So I had to get this little bowl. Again, I don't know where it's gonna go. I'm thinking maybe in my sewing room as a, a spot to catch zippers and notions, but I knew I had to have it because it was so cute. I got some candlesticks. So I got this one that holds three candles, which is really, I mean, that's so, so cute, especially with all the candles in it. And then I got this really quirky one. It's like marble. It looks like a three, but it's really cute and quirky. And I thought that is too unique to not own. It was also pretty cheap. I found some Christmas stuff. Um, and then once I committed to getting my Christmas stuff back out, I just kept going with the Christmas stuff that I found. So these were in the dollar section of our thrift store. These two little baskets. I just thought they were so cute. And I'm like, I know that for a dollar, we will use those every Christmas. It's gonna be so fun to have. So I had to get those. And then I also found this little pair of stockings for super cheap that I just thought would be cute to decorate with. And then this was at an antique store, but me and my husband have knitted stockings. So I thought we could forever more thrift really pretty knitted or crocheted stockings for our kids. And so this is for my daughter. 
Okay, I also got this for my daughter. I just could not pass it up. It should be her size next year. And it's just, it's got little buttons down the back and the cutest little corduroy jumper. I was like, that is just way too cute to leave here. So I got that. This I got because I love these little, I don't even know what there are, like embroidered runners, I guess. I got this and I had in mind for my, like we have like an entryway dresser downstairs. And so I got it for that and it totally fits there. So I'm really excited about it because that's exactly what I had in mind. I just don't like a bare dresser. And so that was what I was thinking for that. I got a cute little candle snuffer. We've been desperately needing a candle snuffer. And so I got this because we really need it. I found this long mirror. I don't really know what to do with it, but I know that I'm thinking that I should work it into a gallery wall, maybe in the sewing room. It's got floral details around the side. It was cheap. I just couldn't leave it there. As you can tell, for the most part, I don't have a plan for what I'm getting a lot of times. I just get things that I think are really pretty and I know go in my house. I've kind of established a color palette for my house, which I can talk about in another video, but that way I know whenever I see something that I will be able to work it in one way or another. I got this big frame. I think it was, yeah, the Pratt's Tog is still on it. $2 and it's like an eight by 10 frame. I just thought it was too cute to leave. And like I mentioned, my color palette, one of my colors in my house is definitely pink. So that will work for a long time. I got this little runner rug. I think it's five feet long. So it's folded in half still. I just thought it was cute, it had to have. And oh yeah, me and my daughter both got new coats. Um, I don't know if you can tell, I like things a little bit funky. I like things a little bit different. Um, so when you see these coats, they are a little bit different. I'm aware of that. I thought they were just the cutest things. And so I got this one for my daughter and a ski coat for me. I desperately needed a new ski coat postpartum because my old one no longer fits. So I was had to get a new ski coat and I am really glad I was able to thrift it and not spend like, I don't know, over a hundred dollars on a ski coat. The last thing I got this weekend is this pair of lamps. I just thought these were the cutest things and they were pretty inexpensive and I already have a spot in mind for them. And so I just thought they were so cute and definitely went with our more mid-century vibe that we have going on at our house. So I picked those up. Like I said, this particular thrift haul is actually very out of character for me it is very rare that i go and get a ton of stuff at one time i am definitely the type of person that just goes very often i pop in quick to the thrift store i usually don't make it a whole big event and i pick up a thing or two here or there just to make my house beautiful on a budget The first step to turning the guest bedroom into a sewing room was to clean and mop the floors and bring in this thrifted kitchen island that I found. So I actually found it on Facebook Marketplace and I knew it would be the perfect dimensions for my embroidery machines. I have two embroidery machines, a serger and a sewing machine, which is why my sewing room really needed its own dedicated space. So once I got this in the house, I got it all cleaned up. The top doesn't need to be refinished, but I'm gonna do that later. But I got it all clean and brought in my embroidery machines. I have two different types of machines. So I wanted them set up on their own dedicated counter and now they have that. I also knew that I wanted some sort of cutting table in my sewing room and we actually already had this counter height workbench in our shed that was barely being used and so I just cleared off what was on it and brought it into my sewing room and I already know it is going to be the most perfect spot to just have a clear work surface so that I can cut on top of it and just always have a place to have my rotary mat and stuff. So I am really excited about that. You will definitely be seeing more about the sewing room in the weeks to come on this channel. One hour before we want to eat dinner, I divide the sourdough pizza dough balls into four so that they can do their second rise. 
And then once they are done, we start rolling them out into our pizza crust. This is definitely something we've gotten better at over time and are not perfect at. And while one of us rolls out the dough, the other usually prepares the ingredients. Our pizzas follow a similar formula, so obviously sauce and plenty of seasoning. I prefer Herbs de Provence. And then I don't do cheese because I can't do dairy, so then I just go straight into my toppings. I like onion, sausage, pepperoni, whatever kind of herbs I have on hand. And then my husband obviously does a more normal pizza with cheese and all of the good toppings. Once we have all the pizzas assembled, we do a short par bake in the oven and then we bring them out to the uni. Part of enjoying winter is using the pizza oven even though we have to bundle up to do it. We love that pizza oven. We have so much fun coming up with unique recipes and just using it. We host pizza parties and I actually should mention that it was also purchased secondhand because we literally thrift everything in our home. Thank you for joining me as I learn how to embrace these slow winter days, caring for my home and just being with my family. I hope that this channel encourages you to enjoy the slowness of winter as well.